Hello, hello. A complete electrical failure at night. Something we train for, but hope never happens. Test, test, test. Can you hear me, guys? You can hear me? I can't hear you. This footage comes from Stephen Martinet. He had a whopping 60 hours total time at the point of this flight, and this was his first night flight without his instructor. He was flying with two non-pilot buddies. I need you to hold this. Hold this. Okay. So Stephen handled this situation really well. There's several teachable moments here in this footage. Uh, in no particular order. First of all, how do you deal with your passengers when something like this is happening? I think what he did was the right thing, which was hand one of his passengers the flashlight, start troubleshooting on his own, and not get into briefing them uh, anything more than what was on a need-to-know basis. There's no point in distracting yourself with something like passenger briefing when it's not critical yet, and it wasn't. He just needed to try to figure out what had happened. The flip side, of course, is that having a stressed out or upset passenger is very distracting, so it's important to mitigate that. But I think he did the right thing, just staying quiet and working on troubleshooting. Another key point here is that obviously having backup equipment is very important. He had his flashlights on board, of course. He also actually had a handheld radio, which when I saw this video, I assumed he didn't. I don't. It's something that's on my list. I've been putting it off forever to get one for my flight bag. But uh, what's really interesting here is that he did have one, but by the time he thought of using it, it was actually too late in the flight, and we'll see that in a minute as to why. Brown Tower, Cessna 442 Echo Sierra, uh, about six miles to the east. Request for stop landing. Oh, I think we closed already. So they were arriving just before 9 p.m., which is when the tower closes, and obviously no response from the tower means the tower has closed. Now at airports like this, oftentimes the runway lighting defaults to RCAL, which is pilot-controlled lighting, where you click your key on your mic to turn on or off the lights. Uh, that's important to note, because that's going to become a problem later. So Stephen's aware, sort of subconsciously, that the tower isn't there to help him out with lighting, but he's not really fully grasping the fact that it's on a timer as of now. Um, but, you know, why would you, right? It's not a problem yet. So he's about to do his downwind check. He asks his passengers if they're still buckled in, and then he flicks the switch for his landing light, and that's when all hell breaks loose. Okay. You guys are still buckled? Yeah. So that's it. Uh, things start failing and shutting down. The intercom starts popping and sounding weird, and Steven's beginning his troubleshooting process and that brings us back to real time. So going back to the point about backup equipment, uh, Steven does have a handheld radio in his bag but it's not necessarily easy to grab at this point but that's kind of moot because he's really not even thinking about it. The lights are on, he knows no one's in the tower, he's not really thinking anything beyond the immediate issue of getting this airplane landed with the electrical failure. But the fact is backup equipment is only good if it's ready to use. In my case I don't even have the handheld radio so Steven's definitely one step ahead of me. I kind of fool myself into thinking I've got the uh, cell number for the tower that I usually fly around programmed into my phone so I could theoretically call in the event of a comm failure, but I mean here we are at a situation where a phone call is not going to help you here. If those lights turn off, the only thing that's going to help you is a radio tuned into the frequency that allows you to turn those lights back on. But let's say at this point he did think to grab his handheld out of his flight bag. Are the batteries charged? Are the frequencies tuned? I mean, he's flying with non-pilot passengers, so he'd have to explain to his passenger how to use a handheld radio and how to get it tuned up for him, which at this point is a distraction risk that's just not worth taking. But at this point, he's not really thinking about that. He's got the runway made, it's lit beautifully, he can see it, he's gonna make it, it's all good. What are the odds that those lights are gonna shut down on him short final? <laughs> oh, thanks, that's good. Turn that light off. Obviously this is not a good situation, but the naked eye does see better than the camera, so it's not pitch black out there, but it's definitely not ideal. Steven decided to continue with the landing because he could sort of see the runway enough that he felt safe. But I mean, 100 feet AGL to be landing into a black hole is definitely not ideal. Yeah, well, that's a really good first night flight. But deciding to abort and overshoot at this point also has its problems. He's got an undiagnosed electrical problem and it seems pretty serious, so there could be an imminent electrical fire and it might be best just to get this airplane on the ground. Is that a taxiway? That's not a taxiway. He's also got electric flaps which are down that probably won't go back up. So overshooting now just is asking for trouble and he's going to be taking an airplane back into the air and bringing those problems with him. So I think he made the right call to land. That was pretty close to an emergency. That, that just happened. 
Was there a reason for it or did it just nope. happen? Nope. I went to turn on my landing lights and everything electrical turned off. That's what happened. So thanks to Steven for sharing this footage. It definitely inspired me to go out and get a handheld radio before my next night flight. My videos are generally self-analysis of my own footage. Obviously in this case it's shared footage, but the spirit of it is still the same. I'm just looking to improve and grow as a private pilot. I'm not an instructor, but for more virtual ride-along flying videos like this, please subscribe and keep your flight chops sharp. Wherever you are in the world, share your aviation. Share aviation. A network for pilots, by pilots.